Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today I want to introduce the build a -Pi version 2. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Before we get to today's content, I've got to give a shout out to these three guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. A couple of points to cover before we get started. Uh, this is a question that gets asked quite a bit uh, through email and comments on the channel. First of all, this script is only designed to be run one time on a new installation of Buster. Trying to run this script multiple times is probably just going to create uh, problems and headaches for you. So one time run and you're done. If uh, you know, be certain that you've checked exactly what you want to install before the build because if you try to go back and run it again, you're probably going to run into issues. Along with that, this script is not intended uh, to be run again so that we can update the system at a later point in time. You're gonna have to do the updates for software individually. At some point in the future, I may attempt to write an update script to go along with the build a -Pi script, but for now, you're gonna have to do that manually. Okay, so after the very successful launch of the build a -Pi script, uh, roughly a month ago or so, I got a lot of feedback, a lot of uh, requests for different things uh, to be added to it and uh, we wanted to start building a few more things from source rather than just uh, downloading it from the repository. But we took a lot of the uh, suggestions that you guys had and added it into this version. So let's take a look at what we've added in. So here's a list of uh, some of the things that we've added in. I believe this covers all of them, but I might have skipped one uh, here or there. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is we can now build uh, FL Digi from source. And then we've added a couple of different logging uh, software that you might want to try out or use. Uh, I added GPredict satellite tracking for those guys that are really into their satellites. Uh, slow scan TV software, uh, grid tracker, and VOACAP. Uh, for propagation prediction. So all of those are new. Now, there is a couple of uh, differences in the way this installs. So I'm over on the GitHub site now for the Pi build, and I'll leave a link to this site down in the description below, along with the one command that you're going to need to run once you get your Pi up and running. So let's start by scrolling down the page and you'll come to the install section. And the only thing you're going to need to do after you get Buster flashed over to the SD card is run that one line of code highlighted in blue right there. Uh, once you do that, you'll be on your way to building the Raspberry Pi. So after you run the command, I believe the very first thing it's going to ask you is for your call sign. And then uh, you're going to see this screen here. And this just asks, do you want to build the FL Digi suite from source? If you choose yes, then uh, it's going to build FL Rig, FL Digi, uh, FL ARQ, FL Message, and FL Amp all from source. Uh, so if you don't want to do that, you want to save a little bit of time, you can choose no here. I recommend building it from source to get the absolute latest and greatest uh, release that's out there. Do keep in mind that building FL Digi, uh, the entire suite from source will add somewhere around uh, 45 minutes or so to your build time. So it does add uh, you know, a significant amount of time, but I feel it's well worth it. Now, after you've answered that question, you'll be presented with uh, the first install box here, and you can check which applications you want to use. Uh, so it's, you know, it's entirely up to you as to how you want to build your system. I would check the GitHub page down, uh, a little further down the page. There is a description of each of the applications, and sometimes, uh, we need to install one thing with the other. Uh, so one thing's kind of dependent upon the other. 
Uh, for instance, PAT menu, there's no sense in installing that if you don't install PAT. Uh, if you do choose to install PAT, then you're going to want the R.C and R.GUI uh, because those are two modems that would be used with PAT for HF uh, connections. Uh, and also you would need Direwolf and AX25 if you wanted to use PAT for two meter packet work. Uh, so there are some kind of dependencies uh, depending on exactly what you're building, but you do have the choice to pick and choose. Now, you'll go ahead and hit install selected here and let this run. Once the first set of applications is installed, the Pi will reboot and on reboot you'll be presented with another install box uh, where you can choose some additional software to install on your Raspberry Pi. Put a check by the applications that you're interested in installing and then go ahead and hit install. Once all of that's finished, your Pi will reboot again and you will be ready to start configuring your system. I'll leave a link to the original video right up at the top. Uh, if you scroll through that video towards the end, it will go through how you need to configure a brand new setup. So I do want to take just a second and show you guys a new tool that I have built into the build a Pi 2 script. This will install by default. Uh, you don't have to choose this uh, when you're building your Raspberry Pi. Uh, but it was an issue that I saw a lot of guys were running into. And here's the scenario. We've got the hotspot running, but we want to connect to a new Wi-Fi SSID. So before you had to go through and edit the WPA supplicant file and then restart the hot, it was it's too much trouble. We can make that a lot simpler. So now by default, this is built in. So you want to open up your terminal and come over to your bin directory. So CD space bin. And if we run an LS command, you'll see that we have this new script right here called add hyphen Wi-Fi. It's not executable, so let's go ahead and make that executable with chmod plus x add hyphen Wi-Fi. Oops, gotta spell it right, Wi-Fi. All right, if we run the ls command again, you will see that that is now in green. So let's give you a idea of what it does. Now, so, oh, one other thing, since it's in the bin directory, that is included in our Linux path. Uh, that's part of the setup that the build a Pi script does. So we don't even need to be in that folder to run this command. Uh, so let's clear that. So if you look right now, I'm just in the home Pi directory. I'm not in that bin folder. And if we just run add hyphen Wi-Fi, you'll see that it's going to go ahead and scan for new Wi-Fi signals. So I'm going to choose to connect to this one. Now, keep in mind, this is case sensitive. If you don't get the case right, it's not going to work. Uh, but let's type in km4ack-2 mesh there. And it's gonna ask me for the password. So I'll give it my password and go ahead and hit return. It will ask me if everything is correct. Uh, if you made a mistake, you'll be able to choose no here. If we hit yes and enter, it's going to go ahead and write that information to the WPA supplicant file and attempt to connect. Uh, if you'll notice, it did say right here that it was shutting down the hotspot. And if you look right up here in the top right corner, you'll see that we've got the familiar fan icon telling us that we are connected. Now, this is a brand new setup, so I haven't even uh, set my Wi-Fi country, but once you do that, it would go ahead and show you all of the other available SSIDs as well. So, just a little tool that should make life a little bit easier when you're in hotspot mode and need to get connected to a known Wi-Fi SSID. If you guys have a suggestion for something else you'd like to see added to this going forward, you can head over to the GitHub site, click on the Issues tab, and go ahead and make a note there. Also, if you run into something that's not quite working the way you expected, you can uh, enter it there as well if you do discover some sort of a bug in the application.
All right, guys, that's about as easy as we can make it for you. So I hope uh, this helps you get your Raspberry Pi up and running. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.